She's hardly a supermodel or movie star, but today, Nora Vinson is getting the full-blown glamour treatment. Nora's a writer, and one of these shots will adorn the cover of her new book. This wasn't just a stunt. This was about learning. This is a human project. It was about finding something out about the human creature, and I learned it the best possible way because I went through it. What Nora went through, or more accurately, what she became in the last two years, was a man. Yeah, a little bit shorter on the top. Okay. No, and Nora didn't get a sex change operation. Square. She did it the old-fashioned way, with acting and a disguise. At 5 foot 10, 155 pounds, and wearing men's size 11 shoes, Nora was a natural. Growing up in the Midwest with her actress mother, lawyer father, and two older brothers, Nora was a tomboy with a flair for the dramatic. She says she's still a tomboy and, in fact, is a lesbian living in Midtown Manhattan with her partner, Lisa. I think we can work with this. Her transformation into the guy she calls Ned begins with a buzz cut, baggy men's clothes, and a too small sports bra to flatten her breasts. She even wore a little padding in a jock strap. I also tried to think, well, what kind of guy is Ned? And get, For the know, rest, she enlisted the help of makeup artist Ryan McWilliams. She just came to me and said, Ryan, I'm, I need to turn into a man. The hair is small as we can make it, right? And so they came up with a method of shredding yeah, braided so wool into whisker-sized bits and gluing it onto her face. Women have much stronger nasal resonance as a, as and a rule. And then there's the theatrical component. Ah, oh, so just easy Tarzan out on your chest a little. Ah, oh, good. Juilliard voice teacher Kate Murray coached Nora for months on a program of movement, breathing, and speaking. I want you to be the best man you can be. I want All to incorporate some of the subtle and not so subtle characteristics of being a guy. Notice what men do. If they need to suddenly grab a taxi, hey, they just do that, whereas women will ask for a taxi instead of demand one. When all the pieces are together, hair, makeup, voice, posture, style, the transformation is complete. Walk like a man, walk like a man, walk like a man. And Nora Vincent becomes Ned Vincent. Walk like a man, fast as I can. One of these shots will be the second photo on the book cover. The book, Self-Made Man, is out today and is about Nora's 18 months living as Ned. I wanted to enter male spheres of interest and see how men are with each other. I wanted to make friends with men. I wanted to know how male friendships work from the inside out. Ned's first act as a newly minted male was to join that quintessential bastion of camaraderie, a men's bowling team. The only problem was she's a terrible bowler. I probably bowled before this three times in my life, and that was, you know, in high school when you do it with both hands, you know. So it was just insane for me to walk into this place without any... And why didn't they just run you out of town when they saw how bad you were? It's an amazing thing because I think, I mean, that that's, shows you the generosity that they had. It was the first of Nora's many surprises. She thought these guys from a working class Pennsylvania neighborhood would mock Ned's bowling and reject him as a guy. But from their first meeting, they accepted Ned. The handshake was unbelievable. It blew me away the first time I shook hands with a guy, a strange guy. And I was amazed because you think of women, you know, we're so nice, we're so easy, men are so mean. Complete opposite. Hey, baby. And I felt as comfortable as I could feel right away. They just took me in, no questions asked. This is the first time the guys are coming face to face with the female version of Ned. Would you have known me on the street? No. No, good, good. You look taller than I remember. Yeah, I know, you're shorter. What happened? <laughs> Though they've known about Nora's true identity for months, How are you? Congratulations. Good to see this you. reunion is their first chance to talk about their friendship. But you guys had said that wasn't there that game that, you know, the, the person who didn't make it to 100 had to wear women's panties at the end of the season. And, all that. Yeah, yeah. and I thought, you know, I'm going to give you guys the shock of your life. And I'm gonna wear the team had bowled together for nine months, and gradually, Nora gained entrance into the inner sanctum. She found that all the cussing and good nature ribbing is just how men often show affection for each other. Way to go, Ned. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, that's right. I forgot all about that. Did you know, based on watching her bowl? I mean, you know, the joke was she bowled like a girl. But well, we had our suspicions that these guys did. Maybe, I just maybe Ned was gay Everybody or else, you know. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Everybody has their own style. 
You right. Know, but my I style was. I mean, my style was this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a different no style. style. No style. <laughs> Near the end of the team's run, Nora decided to reveal herself as a woman. Nervous about how they'd react, she tested the waters with the one guy she was closest to. She took Jim out for a drink. So she sits you down, she's very serious, and she says, I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind. And what did you say? So the only thing that would blow my mind is if you told me that you were a girl and that she was a guy. And she goes, well, you're half right. The she Jim's talking about is Nora's partner, Lisa, who the team had met several times. Jim assumed they were Ned and Lisa, a heterosexual couple. But you didn't believe her at first. At first, well, I was still in shock. I said, how can this possibly, you know, where would this come from? This is just a regular Monday night. I was out bowling, having a good time a few minutes ago. Now I'm trapped in this bizarre conversation about your name isn't Ned anymore, you know? Later, Jim told the rest of the team, who all took it well. What do you think Nora expected to find in a bowling alley full of guys? I think she expected to find like a bunch of guys just talking about women's private parts and a bunch of racists and, you know, I think kind of that's what she came into this thinking. They really showed me up as being the one who was really judgmental because they were the ones who took me in, not knowing anything about me. They were the ones who made me their friend and you know, no judgments attached. That's not like it. What's wrong? Nora and Jim became closer friends once he knew that he was a she. Now Jim was willing to speak more personally and openly, like about his wife's cancer. Nora came to see that between men, intimacy is sadly lacking. There's a tremendous potential for tenderness between men, and I'm not sure that it's always realized, and it's terribly sad. Cracking the mystery of a boy's night out is one thing, but what about the explicit world of a man's sexuality? I really ran smack up against the difference between male and female sexuality is that female sexuality is mental. It's up here. And male sexuality is a bodily function. It's a necessity. You just have to do it. When we come back, Nora goes to strip clubs in the company of men as a man. Over the 18 months of venturing out in the world as a man, Nora Vincent guesses she put on Ned's whiskers and clothes about 150 times. After the bowling league, she was ready for love and sex. You went to a couple of sex clubs. What were you trying to get at? Well, at first I thought, this is sort of the quintessential guy guy thing to do right the bachelor party at the strip club when i told people initially that i was doing this they'd say oh you got to go to a strip club she says the clubs were obviously sexual but once again lacking in intimacy which leaves men emotionally frustrated i saw the men there i saw the looks on their faces i saw them sitting alone nursing their bourbon and this is not about appreciation of women of course it's not about appreciation of their own sexuality it's about an urge and it's that's not always that pleasurable really these guys who go to these high priced clubs would say this isn't about pain it's about pleasure men have had the tears and the emotional expression sort of pounded out of them from an early age and so by the time they're they're men it's very they don't even have the vocabulary anymore or or the emotional awareness to really say what they're feeling nora says strip joints are about pure sex drive completely empty of any meaningful interaction even when a woman is gyrating on your lap but you're attracted to women were you ever aroused during no. any of these I really ran smack up against the difference between male and female sexuality is that female sexuality is mental. It's up here. Whereas for men, Nora says, sexuality is, shall we say, below the waist. At its core, it's a bodily function. It's a necessity. It is such a powerful drive, and I think because we don't have testosterone in our systems, we don't understand how hard it is. So it never gets cold where are you back in Australia? Throughout the project, Ned dabbled in the art of picking up a woman. Where'd your friend go? We went with him to this bar wearing hidden cameras. This is my friend JC. I'm Ned. Nora was reminded that in this arena, it's women who have all the power. We sit there, and we, just with one word no will crush someone and the thing is we don't have to do the part where you cross the room 
and you go up to a stranger and say the first words. And those first words are so hard to say without sounding like a cheese ball or sounding like a jerk or whatever else. And yeah, what do you guys do? Nora says the brush off Barbara Jones gave Ned was typical. She was just sort of emblazoned with hostility, you know, just looked at you and you saw everything cross her face, which was, oh, God help me, not again. I'm trying to have a drink with a friend and I've got to deal with you. Barbara was trying to dispose of Ned before her friend returned from the bathroom. Anyway, we haven't seen each other in a while, so we're just catching up. Yeah. Gotta head out to mom. But Ned returned and told Barbara the truth about her gender. You, saying you gave us all the lines, like, try to get rid of us. I, I see, and as a woman, I have such sympathy. I'm like, oh, I hate being this guy that you're trying to get rid of. You know? Talking to a woman, Barbara seemed more open and friendly, and in the end, actually apologized for how she had treated Ned. So I'm sorry for being bitchy. Uh, please. Does that kind of living in the skin of a man in the bar scene, in the dating scene, give you a different kind of respect for men? It gives me a, a certain definite sympathy. Um, and I don't mean that there's any disrespect, but it, it just makes me understand what's going on. Nora, as Ned, also went on about 30 dates with women, mostly arranging them on the Internet. Did you have any fun? Rarely. Rarely. It was, it was just an ordeal. Unpleasant. Yeah. She says the pressure of Ned having to prove himself was grueling. Nora was surprised that many women had no interest in a soft, vulnerable man. My prejudice was that the, the ideal man is a woman in a man's body. And I learned, no, that's really not. There are a lot of women out there who really want a manly man. Ultimately, Ned told most of his dates that he was Nora. Many of the women reacted angrily, but usually just for a little while. Some women wanted to continue the relationship. They remained interested in pursuing something further. You know, so whereas... Sexually? Yeah. And that was heterosexual women who, that's what I'm saying. It's all up here. Because they said, well, we connected. And, you know, there, there's something I really like you and I don't care. How many guys would do that? That's the difference between male and sexu female sexuality right there. Nora says she found differences not only in sexuality and intimacy, but in every walk of life. I'm in the market for a car and... Take, for example, shopping for a new car. Going in as Nora, the sales pitch quickly becomes flirtatious. Any guy that gets in is going to feel like, okay, this girl... I want to date this girl just for a car. Well, well I, didn't, I didn't say... It. I didn't say it. But going back to the same salesman as Ned, the tone was all business, and the talk was all about performance. They have the three-liter Duratec V6 uh, engine. And in the end, a personal touch for Nora, the salesman would never have offered Ned. All right. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much. In Nora's final months as Ned, she upped the ante, infiltrating all male inner sanctums. But after 18 months of deception, she was unraveling, and the play acting at a men's wilderness encounter group would begin to scare her. One guy had chopped up a log pretending it was his wife. So I thought, great, you know, we're going to have axes and knives. So I was terrified. Having survived strip clubs, dating, and a bowling league, Nora Vincent wanted Ned's last days to be among men only in private and intimate surroundings. Nora, a lapsed Catholic, thought the cloistered inner world of a monastery would be ideal. Ned managed to live for three weeks as a trainee. The monks, she says, were pious, smart men, but they were still men. What made it prototypically male? What do you mean by that? The breakdown in communication, the, 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 need, the desperate need for male intimacy and the lack of ability to give it, really painful. Nora says the monks were hostile to her feminine side. She says she was ostracized because of the monks' assumptions about her sexual orientation. Ned was really at the center of it because he was an effeminate man, and many of them thought I was gay. As one of them told me in confession, I, you know, I said, I have something to confess to you. And he said, well, I think I know what it is. And, and I said, what? And he said, well, you're gay. And I said, well, yeah, but not in the way you think. <laughs> Loneliness can't hide. Nora thought the perfect end to her 18-month saga was to join a men-only therapy group, a place where guys tried to bond and show their emotions instead of hiding them.
They don't get to show the weakness. They don't get to show the affection, especially with each other. And so, so often, all of their emotions are shown in rage. And they kept talking about their rage, often their rage toward women and what they would do physically and violently towards women. Right. A lot of this was blowing off steam. It's sort of talking about the things that need to be said that you know you would never do. I mean, you know, they would talk about fantasizing about chopping up their wives or something. It's not that they would ever do that, but it was a way to get out the blackest thoughts. He doesn't like doing that work, but he can't quit. Nora began to empathize with the fear and stress men feel for having to always be the strong provider. The therapy leader, psychologist John Guarnaschelli, saw Ned's shyness as typical of a newbie coming to brave the group. A lot of the guys spoke to me after the retreat and said, talking to him, I felt like I was talking to somebody feminine. Once again, some group members thought Ned was gay, but no one suspected he was a woman. After eight sessions, the group went on a backcountry retreat. But Nora's 18 months of being an imposter was closing in on her. The pressure of being someone that you're not and being the, the fear of discovery and the deceit that it involves piles up and piles up. So by the time I got around to doing this men's group, it was really reaching critical, critical mass. On the retreat, her fear became palpable. And I was out in the woods with a bunch of guys who have rage issues about women, and I was in drag. And I thought, oh, God, you know, what am I doing? Nora was unraveling. She felt guilty about lying, as though she should be punished. In the final ritual of the weekend, the men were to act out the problems unearthed at the retreat with a partner. And you asked that he harm you. Yeah, yeah, I did. At that point, I was starting to really kind of crack up. I was really... You were uh, coming unglued. Yeah. The, so you were asking this guy to cut to you? To cut me. So self-mutilation is, is very much a female thing. And I think it was my way of, of paying the penalty for what I, I felt I had done. Nora was not harmed physically, but she continued her emotional descent and a week later checked into a hospital with severe depression. Identity, she concluded, was not something to play around with. When you mess around with that, you really mess around with something that you, you need that helps you to function. And I found out that gender lives in your brain, and it's something much more than costume. And I really learned that the hard way. Nora says she's healed now and glad to be rid of Ned. But her views about men have changed forever. Men are suffering. They have different problems than women have, but they don't have it better. They need our sympathy, they need our love, and they need each other more than anything else. They need to be together. Do you think women understand what it's like to be a man? Not at all. No clue. No idea. John Guarnaschelli thinks Nora's conclusions that men are just as emotionally vulnerable as women are important and will be taken seriously because they came from a woman. I said to her, this is going to be revolutionary because it's been looked at as though men were the perpetrators and women were the victims. This is not and now, one last identity switch. Guarnicelli has never come face to face with the real Nora. Hi, John. I'm Nora. Uh, hi. It's wow. <laughs> Bruce teaches, so we can never come to the meeting. So. And both John and Nora are happy she is a she. The irony is not lost on Nora that it took a trip into manhood to help her appreciate her own femininity. I'm so much closer to myself than I ever was that I really like me. I really like being me, and I really like being a woman. Did you like being a woman before, Ned? I did, but I like it more now because I think it's more of a privilege. That's perfect right there. That's awesome like that. Nice.